want to remind you of the former executive editor, Dean Bacay. Dean Bacay hired a guy named Brett Stevens. Brett Stevens is a Trump-hating Republican to write a column for the New York Times. And his first column was about his skepticism about climate change alarmism. Not about climate change. Climate is always changing. About the alarmism, about the dastardly things that are supposed to happen unless we dramatically switch from a, a fossil-based fuels to so-called renewable energies. And he talked about his skepticism about that. That's all. But so many people who subscribed to the New York Times were upset. <laughs> Contacted the paper, canceled their subscriptions. And Dean Bouquet was at a conference and it came up. Here's what happened. The people have is, look, there's plenty of places to get uh, uh, news from climate skeptics, if we want to call mm -hmm. them that. Um, and they can get it anywhere they want. Yeah. Um, so if the New York Times is, is going to stand for something, well, they should stand for something and embrace embrace the left side of the the, the progressive. Well, the editorial page. Thingy, my Bobby. I just yeah. lost all my words. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. The editor of the New York Times. The it's embarrassing. The editorial page does embrace the thingy, my Bobby. Thank you. <laughs> the thingy, my Bobby word he's looking for was spectrum. Uh, the New York Times uh, is a liberal paper, this guy admits, and you can always find somebody skeptical about climate change elsewhere. Why would the New York Times hire somebody whose first, col first column was his skepticism about climate change alarmism? And Dean McKay said, well, what are you talking about? We're, we're, uh, uh, and he went over the history of the editorial page in the New York Times. But I would argue that it is the job, and again, I'm not the opinion editor. It's like the part of, it's not part of my province. But people, the history of the New York Times, that whole section was not created just to have columnists and writers who agree with the New York Times. It was created after the fall of the Herald Tribune. The Herald Tribune was a conservative newspaper. It failed in the New York Times. And the New York Times hired a bunch of their writers to provide a different perspective. And the publisher of the New York Times, the original publisher of the New York Times, wanted some of the conservative columnists who work for the Herald Tribune. So it was created as a forum for different voices. I don't understand how one can actually have an intellectual discourse in this country if you cannot have the opportunity to read thoughtful people with whom you disagree. I don't understand how you can have a normal discourse if you can't hear from thoughtful people with whom you disagree. And then he said this about the left. At a moment in the country right now, which I think, you know, the left should do some soul searching too, right? We don't want to hear anything that we've, we've long said this about the, about the right, but I think the left we don't, I'm not we, I'm a journalist, <laughs> but the left as a rule does not want to hear thoughtful disagreement. But the left as a rule does not want to hear thoughtful disagreement. Did you hear this admission? First he said, we don't want to hear, and he caught himself because he didn't want to uh, accuse the uh, New York Times of being left wing, even though it's left wing. We don't want to hear People on the left, they don't want to hear thoughtful disagreement. Again, this is probably the most important newspaper uh, uh, in the country, if not in the world. We don't want to hear thoughtful disagreement as a rule. What an incredible statement for the executive editor of the New York Times to say. Now that brings us to what Sonia Sotomayor said about Justice Clarence Thomas. But I suspect I have probably disagreed with him more than with any other justice. And she was asked at this left-wing conference, how is it you can get along with somebody like Clarence Thomas? That we have not joined each other's opinions more than anybody else. And yet, Justice Thomas is the one justice in the building that literally knows every employee's name, that they, every one of them. And not only does he know their names, he remembers their families' names and histories.
He's the first one who will go up to someone when you're walking with him and say, is your son okay? How's your daughter doing in college? He's the first one that when my stepfather died, sent me flowers in Florida. He is a man who keeps, cares deeply about the court as an institution, about the people who work there, but about people. He has a different vision than I do about how to help people and about their responsibilities to help themselves. I've often said to people, Justice Thomas believes that every person can pull themselves up by their bootstraps. I believe that some people can't get to their bootstraps without help. They need someone to help them lift their foot up so they can reach those bootstraps. That's a very different philosophy of life. But I think we share a common understanding about people and kindness towards them. That's why I can be friends with him and still continue our daily battle <laughs> over our difference of opinions and cases. So are you saying, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, that a conservative person like Clarence Thomas can still be a nice guy? A conservative person like Clarence Thomas can still care about people? I mean, notice the whole question. How is it you can get along with somebody like Clarence Thomas? As if people who are conservative, by definition, are people who are angry, brittle, caustic. You can't be friends with them? My mother was a Democrat. I love my mother. My older brother Kirk was a Democrat. My best friend, I loved him. We disagreed about all sorts of things. But we had common ground on one thing. We all wanted people to realize their God-given potential. How people on the left, as Dean Bacay said, as a rule, doesn't want to hear thoughtful disagreement. Think about that. As a rule, people on the left, says Dean Bacay, do not want to hear thoughtful disagreement. This is where we are in this country. This is why so many people have lost friends after they voted for, uh, indeed, even embraced Donald Trump. Because so many people on the left cannot divorce their politics, hostility towards people like Donald Trump, from the humanity of those who support people like Donald Trump. People on the left need to do some, as Dean Bacay said, some soul searching.